good day to each and every last one of you. Welcome to New Hope Baptist Church, where we are building faith and sharing love. Hey, during our Thursday evenings, hey, we're taking a journey back. We're calling it Throwback Thursdays, where we'll look at some of the classic messages that have been preached at the New Hope Church and some messages that have been shared in different pulpits across the country. Listen, some words have extra life and extra years and miles on them. And we trust that it's going to bless you. If you're watching and you need to know Jesus or you're looking to connect with this community, hey, you don't have to wait to be in person. You don't have to be in this city or this region. You can connect with us. Be a virtual member. You can join by texting NHBC Join. Text NHBC Join to 501 737 4040. Listen, let's go into the sanctuary and take a journey back. Those of you that have your Bibles, turn with me to the Gospel of John. John chapter 20. John chapter 20. And I want to start reading at verse 11. John 20. Verse 11 reads like this. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she stopped to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had lain. One at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they've laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking, supposing him to be the gardener? She said to him, sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where have you laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary, she turned to him and said in Aramic Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. Verse 11, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. I want to talk about with the Lord's help in your prayers, reasons not to cry. Yeah. Beloved, today... The releasing of tears is universal behavior. Those of us who have lived longer than a few days, you've had to cry a time or two in your life. Listen, tears is universal. It doesn't matter if you're in Arkansas or if someone is in Asia or Australia. Someone knows what it is to cry. And we have a way of interpreting the tears oftentimes that we shed. And may I suggest to you this morning, we just don't arbitrarily cry. We don't cry because we don't have anything else to do. People cry for all sorts of reasons, joy, pain, misfortune, stress, and strain. All of those things have a way of making us cry. But more so, more, more so often than not, most times many of us cry when there has been something severely that has pained us. When it seems like life has dealt with us bitterly and sometimes it seems as if life is unfortunate and downright unfair, we cry. Someone here, you know what it is when you simply want to make a better life for your family and because of financial limitations, you can't give your family all that you desire to give them. You pause and cry. When you sometimes turn on the news and you look at the state that America is in and who is occupying the White House and how 
politicians put politics above people, sometimes all you can do is cut off the television, shake your head, and cry. For some married person, you know what it is. You put all of your all in your marriage, and no matter what it seems like you try to do, it seems like your marriage is being ripped away at the seams. You cry. Someone here, you know what it is to go to the doctor's office and you thought it was just a routine visit and unfortunately they called you and say we need you to come back in. And the doctor gave you a disturbing prognosis and all you were left to do was sit on the table and baptize yourself in your own tears. When we look at how our African-American brothers are oftentimes being gunned down like wild game in a safari desert. When you see time after time the news comes on and another brother has been gunned down, all you can do is cry. But let me push it a little further this morning when you stop and step back and look at yourself in the mirror and you consider how good God has been to you and sometimes how we still willfully let God down but when we let God down God doesn't let us down all you can do is cry have you ever been in church and you start thinking about how good God has been to you and you ain't been as good to God as he's been to you and tears just start streaming down your face and don't nobody got to tell you to lift up your hands you start lifting up your hands and you start singing to yourself amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm found I was blind but now I see it's some stuff in this world that'll make you cry but I got good news church yo we look at the life cycle 365 days most days you want to cry some days you are crying and when you look at how messed up and how fallen the world is, I got good news. There is one day that you can dry your tears and celebrate, and that's Resurrection Sunday. When we place our focus on an empty tomb, and instead of everything that is wrong, that's a reason to rejoice. I know you got bills. I know you got heartache. I know you've had disappointment, but this day you can pause and reflect and say I'm going to dry my tears because the empty tomb gives me hope even when it seems like life is hopeless that's what we have going on here in John chapter 20 John is written to the most excellent Theophilus and it is another piece in John's evidence to show us that Jesus is indeed the God man John's gospel is not chronological, but it is logical and theological. It simply says that Jesus is God. And in John 20, we see Mary Magdalene standing at the foot or at the entrance of the grave. The disciples had peeked in and seen the grave clothes. But the Bible says instead of her rejoicing, she's crying. It says, but Mary stood weeping. And that's a word for somebody. Maybe you can't rejoice because you're still living on the wrong day of the week. Maybe you can't feel the presence of God because maybe you're still dealing with your painful yesterdays. This is the simple truth I want to give you today. We can have joy based on the fact that God raised Jesus from the dead. And when you consider if God can raise Jesus from the dead, God can raise you out of any dead situation. And that ought to be a reason 
to rejoice. We don't come to church just because he died, but we come to church that he got up and because God raised him up, God can raise you up as well. You don't know who God has you sitting next to and touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know what has you down, but if God can raise up a dead Jesus, I know he can raise you up. I, he can raise you out of bereavement. He can raise you out of financial duress. He can raise you out of self low esteem. Somebody here can testify, I'm ever this, that God can raise you up. I got three quick things and we're going to all eat brunch together. Number one, reason not to cry, number one, matters have changed for the better. Look at how the text opens. It's the first day of the week. The disciples go in. They peek in. They see that the grave is empty. M notice this. The women go and see it, and the Lord had already moved the stone away. If I was preaching another sermon, I'd tell you this morning, he still moves stones. God is able to move anything that can impede our progress from seeing him. These are just normal women and men and this is a stone in front of a cave but the text says Jesus is up but Mary is crying. Wait a minute. She should be rejoicing but she's crying. Can I tell you the reason why she's crying? Because she's still fixated on what happened on Friday. Her eyes is still, she still has the image of Jesus being beat with the whip of nine tails. She still has the picture of blood gushing out of his side. She still has the picture of people snickering and soldiers shooting dice at the foot of Jesus. She is fixated on Friday and she cannot rejoice that it's resurrection Sunday morning. And how many of us here today, you can't rejoice because you are still dealing with painful yesterdays unmet goals painful yesterdays people have let you down painful yesterdays you let God down painful yesterdays unmet goals painful yesterdays dreams are unfulfilled unmet situations but this is the reality God is in the business of changing our context and if God can change your context stop living in yesterday and live in today look at your neighbor and say neighbor I know you got some pain for yesterday's I know some people have let you down. I know you've been to divorce court. I know you made some missteps. But this is the good news of the resurrection that God makes all things new. Look at somebody and say today can be the day of newness. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. I know people got the tea on you. They know what you did last week, last summer, last night. But this is the good news. God doesn't look at what you did yesterday. He looks at what you can become. Somebody shout today. Is there anybody who can testify that you got a past, but God washed it? I, I got to quit. This is the second thing. The second reason we can rejoice today is we have evidence that God is at work. L look at the text. The disciples peek in, Mary peeks in. But the good news about God is he'll let you know that he's still working on your situation. Don't miss this, she's crying about a dead Jesus. She's looking for a dead Jesus. But the text says when she peeks in, he leaves grave clothes, evidence. He already moved the stone away. But then he left the grave clothes. Somebody said, Rem, that ain't special. Yes, it is. 
because the text suggests that the grave clothes was laid in such a manner that it wasn't disheveled, that it was proof that robbers didn't come and steal his body, but that the Lord raised them up and the headpiece was laid just the same way as if Jesus was lying. That this is the problem. Mary was looking for a dead Jesus, but she was already should have been celebrating a resurrected Savior. And that ought to be a word for somebody. Stop looking for funeral attendance in your life and start looking for somebody to speak a word into your life. Y'all missing it. Not only did he leave grave clothes, but the Bible says he left two angels, messengers, to say that Jesus got up like he said he would. The angel said, why are you weeping? And can I tell you something? Every now and then, God will leave you enough evidence to show that I ain't let you alone. That's how you got up this morning and made it to church because you know your life is evidence that God is still on the scene. He's he been working with your life since you was a baby. He's been working with your life when you was in elementary school. He was working in your life when you got to college and you did everything that you was big enough and bad enough to do when you got in your 20s and you start living life your way and some stuff should have took you out but God didn't let it take you out. It's evidence that God is that word. Look at somebody and say, let me be your angel. And tell them, I'm here to tell you that God is still looking. And just tell somebody one thing that God has done for you. Let me help you. He woke you up this morning. Started you on your way. I'm evidence. I got to quit today. But it's something else. And I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. The final piece of evidence is this. What we need is not in the cemetery. I wish y'all were hearing me today. What, what we need is not in the cemetery. Look, Mary is weeping. The angels serve as resurrection reporters. But then Jesus starts talking to her. And he asked, why are you weeping? That's the question for somebody today. Why are you always disgruntled about life when you have a savior? Why are you mad at everything and God is blessing you? No, you don't have what somebody else had, but you got more than what you ever had in your life. No, you ain't driving the Benz, but thank God for the Ultima that you got. No, 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 you ain't living in the split level, but thank God you got an apartment and it's clean and you got furniture and your bills is paid. Now, now look at Mary, look at Mary, I, I'm done. Jesus is talking to her. Don't miss this. Jesus is talking to her but she don't even realize it's Jesus. Now that's a problem today. I want to talk to somebody today. You in dangerous ground when God appears to you and you can't even discern that it's Jesus. The problem with Mary was she was so eclipsed by her pain that she couldn't see that it was Jesus. She was so busy looking for a Jesus that was lying down she couldn't recognize that it was a Jesus standing up in front of her. Listen, God is here and he's speaking to your heart. Don't you be so distracted by what's paining you that you can't see that God is trying to give you new life. He says, Mary, it's me. Finally, the light goes on. This is the same Mary that Jesus cast out seven demons. This is the same Mary that the Lord had forgiven her much because she had sinned much. This is the same Mary that seen Jesus work and finally she sees that it's Jesus. And the Bible says she tries to hold on to him. 
Jesus said, I, I'm glad that you're happy that it's me. She tries to hold on him in a way where she tries to keep Jesus down on her level. He said, no, no, no. I can't stay here because my work ain't in the cemetery. He says, I got to go back to my father and sit on the right hand. You, you missed your shout. Jesus says, I'm not a cemetery attendant. I'm an attendant to your soul because you just didn't sin yesterday. You sinning today and you're going to sin tomorrow. So when you mess up, you're going to need somebody to advocate for you. And that's what Jesus is doing right now. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father saying, look at them. And listen, I know they messed up, Daddy, but put it under my blood. I know they made a misstep, but put it under my blood. I know they've been some places they have no business going, but put it under my blood. But not only is he interceding for us, but then he says, I can't stay at the cemetery because my work ain't local. My work is everywhere. He says, but I'm going to put something on the inside of you. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, the reason why I rejoice because I got something on the inside. I got something on the inside that makes me love my enemies. I got something on the inside that makes me love my friends. Shake somebody's hand and say, what is this that makes me feel this way? What is this that makes me want to run on in Jesus' name? Shake somebody's hand and tell them whatever it is, it just won't let me hold my peace. And shake somebody else's hand and tell them happy resurrection. I'm just here to tell you heroes, heroes, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. Just look in somebody's direction and say he lives within my heart. Have I got a witness at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was death by faith. I, I received my sight. Look at somebody and tell them, neighbor, excuse me. If I get happy, tell them, neighbor, excuse me. It tear roll down my face, but God. Has been good to me. I'm out of here. Just look at somebody. Look them, take them by the hand. Look them in the eye and tell them, neighbor, let me be an angel. Come here, deep, say, neighbor, let me be a messenger. Tell them, God has smiled on me. He has sent me free. that that word and worship was just for you. This is the big question. What's the next steps? Hey, if you are unsaved, never confess your hope in Jesus Christ or unchurched, hey, and you feel God moving on your heart, hey, we open our arms up to you. You can connect and join this ministry by simply texting NHBC Join. In HBC join to 501-737-4040. I promise you someone will call you, connect with you, and share with you the next steps. Listen, you've been blessed by this word. You have 
eating from the Lord's table, we want to invite you to sow seed. This is good ground for you to sow seed in to can give and support the work and mission of this church. There are several ways for you to give. You see those opportunities. Let's continue to move this ministry forward and we can do that with your partnership. Finally, we ask that you stay connected. Connect with us on Facebook, IG. Also download our church's mobile app, All Things New Hope. Text New Hope BCAR, New Hope BCAR in your mobile app store, and you can download our app. All Things New Hope is right there at your fingertips. Listen, we are praying for you, and we ask that you pray for us. Remember that the blessings of the Lord maketh one rich and addeth no sorrow. Be blessed. Reaching the promises of God will call for some stretching of your faith, reaching for extending yourself past comfort levels. Join the New Hope family in person and online as we journey through the life of Abraham to uncover moments of intense reaching that led to the manifestation of the promises of God. Good news, New Hope family. We have a new app that makes staying connected much easier. New Hope Baptist Church brings all things New Hope to the tip of your thumbs. You can access live and recorded sermons, set up a reoccurring gift, and receive updates on all our activities. Text New Hope BC app to 77977 to download the app today or visit the App Store on your mobile device and search New Hope Family AR. New Hope, we invite you to get connected and stay connected to one of our many social platforms. We invite you to get connected on Twitter and keep up with the latest happenings at New Hope. Become our friend on Facebook and see what we've been doing in our community. Watch us on YouTube where you can hear clips and sermons from Pastor Parks. New Hope Social Media. Building faith, sharing love.